What's good, y'all? It's your boy Havoc with Final Round. It is going down. It is fight week, y'all. We got Deontay Wilder versus Tyson Fury. And I want to talk about the keys to the fight. Now, I'm predominantly going to focus on Deontay Wilder because we kind of know what Tyson Fury is going to do. I mean, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. He's going to come into this fight. He's probably going to continue his game plan from the second one. But we'll gloss over, we'll gloss over what he's going to do. We'll highlight it and maybe talk about some of the rumors from his camp of some of the things he might add to his game plan. But let's start with Deontay Wilder. Here's the thing, you guys. Look, if I'm in Deontay Wilder's corner or if I'm Deontay Wilder, I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel. I am what I am. I'm not going to become Sugar Ray Leonard in two years or Pernell Whitaker. It's just not going to happen. That's not the way it works. But let's take a book out of the kind of MMA book. Think about this. Some of the best MMA fighters are specialists within one area. So if you're a striker, you're not gonna become a master at every form of mixed martial arts or form of martial arts, right? So you specialize in one area and you pick up just enough in other areas to do what you do best, right? Keep the fight standing. So if I'm a striker, I'm gonna learn just enough of takedown defense and submission defense to do what I do best or vice versa. If I'm a grappler, I'm gonna learn just enough striking to get my opponent down, maybe set up takedowns to do what I do best. Same thing with Deontay Wilder. I'm not a back-footed fighter. You know, I'm a pressure-oriented guy. I'm a seek and destroyer. I, I do best when I come forward, but I need to learn just enough back-footed skills, okay, from that, that style of back-footed fighting to get change the tempo and the, the dynamics of the fight to where I can move forward again. Because here's the big problem I saw in the first two fight, fights for Deontay Wilder. He never had a say in dictating the pace or tempo of the fight. It was all dictated by Tyson Fury. And how do I know this? Because we saw what happened in the second fight. Think about it like this, you guys. In a boxing match, it's almost like it's almost like a dance. It takes two to tangle. Somebody's gonna lead the dance and somebody's gonna follow. Or a better way to put it is like, you have a bull and you have a matador and you have to establish those roles. Sometimes two fighters just fall naturally within those roles. There's no conflict in dictating who's gonna play what role right between the two fighters. Because if you got somebody who's just a counterfoot, you know, backfooted counterfoot puncher, he's gonna be the matador. Or if you got somebody who's a pressure fighter, and they're very aggressive and they want to move forward, they're going to be the bull. No argument there. You know, or sometimes one fighter is going to dictate that the roles throughout the fight. I'm going to press forward here. I'm going to move backward here. I'm going to be the bull here or I'm going to be the matador here, right? And then sometimes you have a matchup with two fighters who are clashing heads trying to to establish who's going to play what role. Now, in the first fight, both of them kind of fell naturally into their roles. Tyson Fury decided, I'm gonna box off the back foot. This is how I beat this guy. I'm gonna box circles around him. It kind of worked, but unfortunately, he only got a draw on the scorecards. <laughs> Deontay Wilder, seek and destroyer, he was gonna be the bull for the first fight. They both kind of fell into place naturally, no conflict there. Second fight, we learned that Tyson Fury is controlling the tempo and the pace. How do we know this? Because he said, you know what? I learned that when I press this guy backward, he gets very uncomfortable. I learned that his power is not the same because he can't fully extend that right hand. You know, I learned that he gets worn down very easily when he constantly has to be the back footed fighter and play the role of the matador. He doesn't do it well. I'm the bigger man, I'm the better boxer. I'm gonna put pressure, I'm gonna come forward, I'm gonna force him to do something he's not comfortable doing, I'm gonna bully him around the ring, and I'm going to be the bull. I'm going to be the bull, point blank period. And Deontay Wilder never had a response for that because he got absolutely demolished in the second fight. He never came forward, he never had a say in it. And the reason he never had a say because he didn't have any sort of boxing abilities or skills to transform the dynamics of the fight. Well, this is what he needs to do. This is the keys to the fight for him if he wants to change the dynamics, dictate the tempo and the pace at some point so he can get back to doing what he does well. So how does he do that? What's the keys to the fight? First, simple little tool he can add to his arsenal. It's not gonna take much. It's, he doesn't need to spend years to perfect this. It's just add a feint, a little head feint. 
constant, consistent thanks, obviously he has to understand the philosophy philosophy behind it. Because if he doesn't understand the philosophy behind it, he's just doing a little head gesture. It means nothing. But you teach him what it means if you're Malik Scott. You teach him how to set up things from certain reactions by those feints. And what most importantly those feints do, they're going to create a little bit of variation in your attack. Okay, it's going to keep Tyson Fury guessing. It's going to keep him off balance. And you can get his respect. He's already going to respect Deontay Wilder just for this right hand. Especially coming out the first few rounds. He's going to press forward, but every time he thinks Deontay Wilder is going to launch an attack, guess what? He's going to back up. He's going to clear the space and create distance. So it's up to Deontay Wilder to take advantage of that. And he can take advantage of that if he utilizes lots of feints in his game. Two. You're Deontay Wilder, another key to the fight is go down to the body consistently, all right, with variation. And that's why I mentioned feints first. The feints are going to create the variation for Deontay Wilder's body attack because he actually did go down to the body in the first fight, and especially the second fight. He threw lots of jabs down to the body, even threw a few crosses. But the way he was doing it wasn't consistent and there was no substance behind it and there wasn't any variation. So he became very predictable and Tyson Fury was able to make adjustments and parry those jabs down to the body or step out of range to not get hit with that right cross down to the body. So he needs to create variation. He needs to be unpredictable, but he needs to be consistent and sustain that body attack to get respect to wear Tyson Fury down as each round goes by to take away a little bit of power from him and take away his legs. That way you can engage, which leads me to my third key to the fight, is that he's going to have to press forward at some point. You know, and that's why you do the first two things. So you wear Tyson Fury down, you get his respect, and you start pressing forward later on in the fight. So if I had like a time frame for Deontay Wilder, I'd be like three to four rounds. You know, we're going down to the body. We're doing a full on assault down to Tyson Fury's body. We're going to chop that tree trunk down. Okay. But the only way we're going to do that is if you use your feints and you create a little unpredictability and variation in your attack. Okay. From rounds five to six, we're going to start pressing forward at times. We may not be able to keep a constant attack moving forward, but we're going to push them at times. And we're going to move forward. And then round seven to eight, we're going to go for the kill. We're going to try to land that big iconic one-two in that right hand of God. And we're going to try to get him out of there and sleep him for good. Now, if we get past, we don't want this fat fight to drag out from eight to 12. We don't want to go to scorecards because the longer the fight drags out, the more it's going to favor Fury. He's going to be able to make adjustments and he's going to be able to box out boxing. But if we do get past that eight, when, when we get past round eight, fine. Okay, we'll make it. If it gets to that point, we'll make adjustments depending on what we're dealing with of the circumstances in the fight. So, and that's going to be heavily on his corner to kind of make adjustments if it gets to that point. But the key to the fight is going to win by KO, get him out of there, you know. So, use your feints. Use those feints to create variation, unpredicted, unpredictability, you know, to sustain a consistent ongoing body attack to wear your opponent down. You're going to have to do a little bit of that off the back foot. You're going to have to you're going to have to attack Tyson Fury while he's coming at you down to the body off the back foot. And here's a, here's another little ad, a little thing I would add to his game as a back foot fighter. Okay, when you get caught up in the corner, you get caught up in the ropes, okay, pivot out with the hook. Pivot out with the hook. Have the ring awareness. Okay, I'm getting close to the corner. I'm getting close to the ropes. Okay, Tyson Fury's coming with attack. Pivot out. Hook him. All right? So you have some sort of tool to get out of those situations. Okay? And another little simple tool you can add to his arsenal to get off the ropes or the corner and kind of L-step out, roll under, L-step out to the right, get back to the center of the ring, shoot a lead right hand. Shoot a lead right hand, roll under it, get back to the center of the ring. All right. So those are two little all two little notations we have to put in there. You have to have a couple of tools to get out off the corner, get out of the corner, or get your back off the ropes. Have some sort of counter ready to go. 
And also use your feints in that position because if you feint him, he's gonna give you some space. And here's the big key, you guys. This is how Deontay Wilder can start dictating the pace and be more aggressive and do what he does best. <laughs> feint Tyson Fury, feint him. And when you feint him, He's gonna pull out of range, and that's when Deontay Wilder needs to cover that ground and move forward and take advantage of that real estate he'll have available to him. Now he's moving forward, okay? So these are the keys to the fight for Deontay Wilder. We're giving him just enough of boxing off the back foot so he can get back to boxing moving forward. So, one more thing I would say for Deontay Wilder, you're gonna get caught up in the corner and ropes at times. It is what it is. You're gonna find yourself in that position. And one of the combos I saw him and Malik Scott were working was a jab and a triple hook down to the body. He rolls after the second hook, throws another hook after that, and he takes an L step out and he rolls back, turns his opponent and goes back to the center of the ring. When you find yourself in the corner or with your backs to the rope, that is the perfect time to throw that combination because you will rip your opponent the body, you're gonna be in range. You don't wanna throw three hooks or any hook to the body if you're not somewhat mid to inside range. And you know if you're getting cornered or back to the ropes, you know you will get that opportunity and you will be in position to throw that combination and get away with it responsibly. So when you, get, when you do get trapped in the corner of the ropes, that's your go-to combo. And that's the way you make your way out back to the center of the ring. You start boxing again, you slowly start changing the tempo and the pace of the fight, and now you're pressing forward and you're doing what you do best if you're Deontay Wilder. Now for Tyson Fury, like I said, we know what this guy's gonna do, man. He's gonna come in, he's gonna put pressure, he's gonna cut off the ring, he's gonna establish a good stiff jab, he's gonna disrupt uh, Deontay Wilder's timing and rhythm, he's gonna feint his way in to keep him guessing and off balance, he's gonna attack him to the body, He's gonna trap him in the corner of ropes and make him engage in a fight. When he gets in the clinch, he's gonna put all his weight on Deontay Wilder. And I don't think it's good that Deontay Wilder came into this fight heavier than he's used to. At the end of the day, he's still gonna be 30 pounds lighter, maybe even more than Tyson Fury. If I was him, I would've came in lighter and used that as an advantage to stay light on my feet and to conserve my cardio. Because when you're coming in heavier than you're usually, to, usually used to, you gotta carry all that extra body weight that you're not accustomed to. On top of that, now Tyson Fury is gonna be throwing all his weight on you. I'd rather be quick and light on my feet and try to avoid those situations altogether than rather be a little bit slower and get tired quicker because I wanted to pack on more pounds and have more muscles or durability. It's not worth it, but it is what it is. That's the way he's coming in. Hopefully he's in great shape. And it, it should also be noted, you guys, I heard rumors that Tyson Fury might go southpaw in this fight. I don't know if he's just trying to throw a monkey wrench at Deontay Wilder and his team, maybe scare him, uh, you know, f screw with them psychologically and, 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 you know, make them try to make adjustments or, or think about something that might, may not go down or not. But... I wouldn't be surprised if he did come in southpaw. We have seen Tyson Fury switch to the southpaw stance. It could be a nice little tool to throw uh, Deontay Wilder off, an uh, extra dimension to kind of outbox him. For me, if I'm Tyson Fury, I wouldn't even bother with that until, the put it like this, the ball is in Deontay Wilder's court to make the adjustments. The ball is in his court, okay? And... If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Go into the fight. My dog trying to interrupt the video. <laughs> Say what's up to Lima. But the ball's in his court. He has to make the adjustments. Do what you do. If somehow Deontay Wilder comes to the fight and he make he's making the right adjustments and he's got some new boxing skills and abilities and he, now he's forcing you backward, if you're Tyson Fury, you don't have to fear too much, right? Because you know you can box for 12 rounds. You, you did it the first fight, but it's gonna be a little bit dangerous. So that's when you might wanna switch to that southpaw stance from time to time to kind of throw Deontay Wilder off. But you have to be very careful because if you're not careful with your positioning, you're gonna line yourself up with that right hand, that lethal right hand that Deontay Wilder throws. So if he goes to southpaw, he has to be very careful 
about how uh, about the positioning because he could put himself at risk. You know, and once again, even if somehow Deontay Wilder comes out, he makes phenomenal adjustments. He has new skills and abilities. If you're Tyson Fury, what I would do from there is, okay, you got some new boxing skills. All right, let's try and fight at the center of the ring. Let's try and fight. Okay, I'll give you some respect. I'll give you some space and some ground. And let's let's establish this at the center of the ring. I'm not talking about throwing down in the middle of the ring. I'm talking about boxing in the center of the ring where both will be kind of pivoting around each other, trying to outbox one another. Not necessarily like they're both just squaring up on each other and throwing down. So change up the looks for Deontay Wilder. Make him have to constantly readjust and think and do the shit that he's not accustomed to doing, which is boxing very technically. And then what I would do from there is drag the fight on to the later rounds. I would put a little pressure. I would back off going to the center ring and box. Sometimes I'd go off the back foot. Sometimes I'd switch it up to southpaw. And when you get to that 8 to 12 rounds, okay, that's when I go back to my original game plan of putting pressure. I have a watered-down version of Deontay Wilder, and I'm making him think I'm putting lots of mental pressure and I press forward again and I wear his ass down and I either try to just take a one up him on the scorecards or I try to go for the knockout or TKO. But that all of that doesn't come into play if Deontay Wilder does not make a, the, the proper adjustments. God damn it. Fucking cigarette going out. This, this is just my luck, you guys. But I got my boy Kobe here. He's coming in the clutch. Rest in peace to the, the Black Mamba. I don't even got lighter fluid in here anymore. And it's still lighting. Fucking Kobe, bro. But anyways. Yeah, you guys. That's the key to the fight. You know. I'll summarize it one more time. Deontay Wilder. Add some feints to your game. Be consistent with that. Create variation with those uh, those feints. And go down to the body. Keep wild, or Keep Fury guessing. You know. Wear them down. And eventually press forward and do what you do best and you know if that doesn't work honestly uh you know you just gotta kind of like he said go out on your shield if that doesn't work you're kind of shit out of luck you're, like i said you're not going to become sugar ray leonard or pernell whitaker and you just have to find a way to make adjustments along the way or just completely go for broke and play the lottery and sometimes the only way to win the lottery is by buying a ticket so if it gets to that, then it is what it is. But simple game plan, adding an extra dimension to what you're doing, learning how to fight just enough off the back foot to change the tempo and the pace to move forward and land that big right hand. Try and get that KO and end the fight. And good night. If you're Tyson Fury, do what you did in the second fight. Come into it, put pressure, cut off the ring, make Deontay Wilder have to make the adjustment. If he doesn't, you're gonna be gravy. If he does, then okay, box him. Box him in the center of the ring. Give him different looks. Switch to southpaw. Box off the back foot a little bit. Take the fight to the later rounds and go back to putting pressure like you originally did in the beginning and try to get a TKO, knockout, or one up them on the scorecards. This is your boy Havoc. Find a round, get at me, comment below, like the video. If you're a new subscriber, let everybody know, man. We're trying to build a new family here. This is a new channel. And uh, I, I just res I appreciate the support, you guys. And I want to hear from you. What do you think Fury should do? What do you think Wilder should do? What are the keys to the fight? I'm excited. Fight week, you guys. It's going down. We're finally going to get a conclusion. Or we're going to get a continue. Or, or we're going to get a to be continued. <laughs> so uh, we'll see, man. I'm, I'm so pumped for this. And I can't wait for it to be over. And we all know... Once it's over, it's going to be b freaking bonkers on the freaking internet, on YouTube and all these panels and YouTube channels. So, yeah, whoever wins, I, I have no dog in this fight. Obviously, I I'm going to come up with my prediction video. I'm thinking about doing a live stream. Uh, and here's another thing to note, you guys. I don't know if I have enough subscribers at this point or people who would be involved with the live stream. But if you're interested, comment below. I was thinking about doing a little 
fighter breakdown as the fight's going down and we kind of do a little uh, prize to where if you can predict the right outcome of a TKO knockout or the decision, if you can get it spot on, I'll cash app you a prize. I'll cash app, I'll cash app you some money, right? But I gotta see that I'm gonna have some people involved. Uh, as this channel grows, that's what I plan on doing, live streams with uh, cash prizes. I think that'll be a lot of fun and we do a little freaking betting, you know, or stuff like that. And we could do a live fight break, my, my damn cigarette. This is my... Oh shit, Kobe, no, don't do this to me. But yeah, it would be cool, man, to do some fighter breakdowns before the fight, right before it goes down, make predictions, have, have a cash prize forever gets it spot on and you know talk shit along the way it would be lots of fun even if we can't do it for this fight once again if we keep building this channel up eventually i'm gonna start doing that because i think it'd be pretty dope but thank you for the support you guys join the fam if you're new and you're seeing these videos peace and love stay safe